Most of us can be successful for a short amount of time, but stay, living a life of wealth takes a culture. You understand that? I'm not talking about money. It's, it's one thing to live for two weeks away from home, away from your parents or your kids maybe, and to, and to be victorious. But what happens when we get back home? I've, uh, I've been in church my whole life, uh, literally. I think I was born on the second row. <laughs> and um, one of the things that I've encountered as a counselor and just being in the church my whole life is, I, I think it's like the amen factor. And, and that's part of, that's, if I've had a bad taste in my mouth for church at all, it's been that thing that... Uh, you see the same people come in over and over and over again for years and they say amen and we get excited, right? We get really excited as church people and then we leave the same. You go back home, and I'll tell you what the greatest shame would be is if, if you came to this school, you learned a skill set and you went back home and you, you didn't actually grow the culture inside of you at all. You just learned a skill set. A guitar player is a dime a dozen. Piano players, dime a dozen. People who have great voices, dime a dozen. Somebody who actually know, knows how to care for themselves and lives from that place out, ugh. Now we have something to give away, don't we? What separates you from a non Christian? The fact that you're going to heaven, maybe. Congratulations, you got a ticket. Your ticket in for something that God did for you. I actually think that what separates us from non Christians is the fact that we have an unending well of love to pull from if we first actually know how to tap into it for ourselves. The challenge is, is getting this culture to stop long enough. To not just say amen to a good message, to actually go, okay, that thing right there that I learned from Jeremy, that thing that I heard Ben say during announcements, that thing that Jay said, how do I implement that? What does it actually take? How do you create a culture in your life? Repeated success or repeated failures? Repetition. What's the thing that we hate to do the most? <laughs> Repetition. All right, well, you're like, oh gosh, it's going to be one of those. No, it won't. How many of you have heard of Brene Brown before? How many of you haven't heard of Brene Brown? All right, you should go watch. Yeah. Woo. We'll yell for anything. It doesn't really matter. How many eat peanut butter and jelly? Woo. There you go. How many of you are allergic to peanut butter? <laughs> Brene Brown has a talk. Um, it's called The Power of Vulnerability. Uh, I would encourage each one of you to go listen to it. I'm not sure if she's a Christian or not. So if you're worried about the demons coming out of the screen and getting you, you might want to pray before you do that. Um, we're gonna, I'm actually going to talk a little bit from her, from her speech today. Um, but she gives a, a quote by Theodore Roosevelt in the beginning of her talk, and I feel like uh, it's become one of my favorite quotes, and I, I'd love to read it to you guys. It's a little bit lengthy, and so just, just focus and pay attention, um, and we'll go from there. Theodore Roosevelt, it's called The Man in the Arena. How many of you have heard this? Uh, yeah. He says, uh, it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or how the doer of deeds could have done them better, the credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust, sweat, and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, and who comes short again and again, but because there's no effort without error and shortcoming, but who actually, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and at the worst, 
If he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly. So that, is, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Are you living in the arena of life? It is so easy in our culture to sit back like we do on Monday and we critique the Sunday football game. Ah, oh, did you hear about that worship leader? That I would never do that. I know, we don't, we, you wouldn't. It's so easy to think that you are in the arena of life because you're in trouble, because you have trouble all around you, because you have drama all around you, because you're dirty and dusty. That doesn't actually mean that you're in the arena of life. It doesn't mean you're living. You could just simply be dying or surviving. And let me just say this about survival, just so we're all clear. Sometimes surviving is winning. So I just want to point that out. If, you, if you've ever been through a nervous breakdown, you know surviving every day is winning. So I will say that. But surviving as a lifestyle is not winning. <laughs> Brene goes on. Um, she talks about uh, courage. I'm just going to give you her definitions. I think they're awesome. Um, she says, courage is the ability to tell your story with your whole heart and being willing to bear your imperfections. Now we're talking about uh, emotional health. So I'm not talking about the kind of courage where you run in on a battlefield. That's great. That's awesome. I'm talking about the ability to actually accept yourself. Courage is the ability to tell your story. Think about your story with your whole heart being willing to bear your imperfections. That's tough, man. Now we're talking about the arena of life, aren't we? We're not talking about making messes. We're not talking about drama. We're not talking about uh, this person said, well, I'm actually talking about you working on you. Me going, this, this is me. This isn't me in Jesus' name. This pretend version of me in Jesus' name, I call this forth. Now we're actually talking about you. This is it. This is my life. This is my story. This is what I am. This is my fears. These are my successes. That's tough. Any perfectionists in the room? Being willing to bear your imperfections. That's a big game, isn't it? That's a tough game. That's, that's one that you win and you lose but being unwilling to lose at that, unwilling to stop at one defeat. Courage. It takes courage to do that. 